Hello and welcome back everyone we weeb online and today I'm gonna continue the story what if Naruto did solo leveling part 3. If you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload. Now wasting no more time let's begin. Struggling to keep his feet out of the thick liquid's deeper pockets Naruto plodded along the muddy trail in front of him. Takura let out a startled you as some mud seeped onto her skirt. Why is it so muddy here? Yes, it's not like there are rocks everywhere we go, moaned Naruto, feeling just as irritated by their surroundings. What did you say? Nothing. By interjecting, Kakashi put an end to the inevitable dispute between the two. The main reason is because we are near Iwagakure, which is predominantly surrounded by rocks and is widely known for its rough terrain. Why did they intend to visit Kanoha? Because they were asked to buy the Hakage himself and the Eri Danzo guy. With how top secret the entire situation was, Naruto had no idea if the other Genin teams were involved as well. He was compelled to pack up and depart the following day, so he was unable to ask either. In the hopes that the mission would conclude swiftly, he had consumed two chai's ramen right away the following morning as a lucky charm. It would take a day or two, Kakashi said, but he couldn't put too much faith in his eccentric sensei. Sasuke gracefully leaped over a particularly large mud puddle. Didn't the Hakage say our mission was near the Iwa borders? With a hand on his chin, Kakashi said to himself, as you mentioned, borders was the word he used, correct? Hmm, how can I explain this? Ah, I'll start from the beginning. I'm sure you know about what happened during the Third Shinobi World War. If memory serves me correctly, Iwa and Konoha were involved in a major altercation, thought Naruto, recalling the teachings Uruka had once imparted. Absolutely right. In fact, quite a large scuffle. Territories of both Konoha and Iwa were conquered left and right, leaving citizens of their respective villages to suffer in the cruel aftermath of war. The same thing happened in the Second Shinobi World War, and though it wasn't as big, it set the roots for an intense rivalry between the two nations. And with that rivalry came a number of meaningless deaths. That sounds awful, Sakura let out a whine. Kakashi scowled behind his mask. It was. Trust me, I was a part of it. In fact, believe it or not, Konoha were losing the war for a good amount of time. But I'm sure you know who turned the tides. Sasuke gave a confirmation grunt. The fourth. When Naruto heard the name of his hero, Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hakage, his head twisted. Kakashi gave a nod. He managed to single-handedly change the tides of the war, gaining the title of Kanoha's Yellow Flash. However, that is getting quite off topic. What you need to know is that due to the war, there were a large remainder of territories which were unclaimed by both Iwa and Kanoha, in fear of retaliation from both sides. Fakura lowered her head in perplexity and spoke a little more slowly. Huh, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Why doesn't someone just take it? These places aren't just any regular back-of-the-country towns. They were previously battlefields that Shinobi fought on and died. They are reminders that war once existed and should never happen again. If Iwa suddenly came and proclaimed they owned lands such as these, it's practically announcing they are ready for another war. Kanoha and Iwa have had multiple talks and agreed to keep the border areas as a peacekeep of sorts. Danzo mentioned that we would compete with the other Genin teams, right? How in the hell would this work out well if we competed against Iwa? who harbored hatred towards us that we were unaware of. With a panic attack at the thought of confronting the Iwa Shinobi, Naruto questioned. It was not that he was afraid to fight them, but rather that he was unsure of the depth of their hatred. Kakashi appeared to read his thoughts. In any case, if any Iwa Shinobi you know who I'm referring to wander the territory and see us, there would undoubtedly be a fight. That's why I have a safety measure in order to prevent such a situation from occurring. A sigh of relief left Naruto. Which is? Kakashi gestured with one hand. Henge. In an instant, smoke completely covered the transformation as it rolled off his body. 
Slowly, the smoke revealed itself to be how in the hell? A female. A very old woman. Kakashi looked almost unrecognizable, his long gray hair falling off his shoulders and wrinkles covering his face. His back was hunched forward so much that it took away a foot from his previous height. Naruto was shocked by the next words that the Jonin said. Yo. I must be daydreaming. Flakura cried out in shock, nearly falling off a rock. What the hell? Kakashi innocently questioned. I'm pretty sure you know what a henge is, why are you guys so surprised? He even has a slightly different voice. Naruto cast a contemplative glance at himself. Naruto studied the elderly lady in front of him. Firstly, why do you still have the mask on, and secondly, do you really need to use such a disguise? Why not? Naruto folded his arms across himself. Isn't it oddly suspicious for an old woman to be traveling around bordered areas by herself and three other teenagers? Just then, Kakashi released the henge and smoke burst forth once more. You're right, I just wanted to have some fun. In any case, henges aren't always so useful. If an enemy sensor is present in the battlefield, it would be incredibly easy for them to tell who is using henge. For now, we are just using the technique to hide our real looks. But why? Sasuke inquired, expressing the opinions of Sakura as well as Naruto. At the moment, Naruto was genuinely unaware of the purpose of the henge. It's not like their appearance would make a fight any more likely, even if they got discovered. It appeared that Kakashi was taking needless safety measures, something he never did. Kakashi, being careful not to look at any of the genin said, It's not to be recognized by any Iwa Shinobi, trust me. Considering this is a competition, the Iwa genin may target you in the real Chunin exams. Maybe no one really noticed, but I'm lying through my teeth here. The real explanation has to do with Naruto's hair. His fair hair, highly unusual in these parts, would undoubtedly draw attention. I can't allow them to establish a connection between him and Sensei Kami forbid. As Naruto turned to face the path ahead, he noticed that building shadows were starting to form. Kakashi brought everyone's attention back to himself by clearing his throat. Like I said, all of you will need to use henges. In case we encounter any Iwa Shinobi, we will have to create alternate identities. Naruto's gaze expanded. Alternate identities? Yes, like a different name, look, and if you want personality, though that's not really required for this mission. Fakura inquired a moment later, how do we know what to change into Sensei? Hmm, I'll give you some tips on what to change. Sasuke, take care of the hair, I don't know, smooth it out or something. As for Sakura, please change your hair color to black. And Naruto, you will need the most change. Naruto rebuked, slightly offended, saying, Huh, why me? Kokashi laughed. I didn't mean it in that way, Naruto. The truth is, you are the most likely to stand out in a crowd. In fact, you should change your entire face for now. Take out those whiskers, and you have to change your hair color to black. The eyes are also a bit noticeable. Hair, eyes, and whiskers. Well, I suppose that is feasible. Sasuke came to a stop. Should we just do it now? For now, just try it out, but don't let your chakra levels reach below 50%, Kakashi replied, casting a meaningful glance Sakura's way. Well, using a henge continuously doesn't use too much chakra, but it can still drain a lot if you use it continuously. All right, I suppose I'll take care of it now. Henge, henge found. Which character customization menu would the player like to utilize? In agreement or disagreement? What Naruto was staring at was unknown to him. Yeah, I see. Beginning. Menu henge. Call. Skin. Hair. Height. Face. Body. Eyes. Do I just set everything up with my thoughts as usual, I guess? So let's just give it a shot. Naruto inhaled deeply as he tried to visualize his disguised body. Black eyes. How should my face be changed? I suppose a little bit more angular. Yes, I still have a lot of baby fat. For now, I'll also pull off my whiskers. I can grow a few inches on myself, that's my height, right? 
Let's make the skin a little bit paler. Hair needs to be less puffed and a little longer. Yes, please turn it black. My body should stay largely unchanged. That's it, I suppose. Mistake, set a name, please. Name, um, um, who is the guy in that one comic I read called? Ruji? Ruji? Yes, that is all there is to it. Ryuji has been assigned to Henge. Note, by using the Henge menu, the user can access the sorted Henge repeatedly without it changing because this particular Henge is saved in the system. Suddenly, Naruto's body was engulfed in smoke. The genin staggered right away, finding it very difficult to walk at his new height. With awe, Naruto turned to face himself. Whoa. Naruto was obviously unable to see the changes in his face, but he was able to see the changes in his body. He was not as thin as usual, but his body was more streamlined in a way. Still, it was clear that he had black hair that was creeping down his forehead. Kakashi's eyebrows went up. That's an incredibly well done henge. Most henges which are creating a completely new body are usually poorly done, but yours almost seems almost uncannily real. Hum, do you know anyone who looks like that by any chance? Naruto gave a sly smile. Nope, I'm just that impressive, sensei. Your voice as well, it's not the same at all. You could probably hold that henge for this entire mission with the amount of chakra you have as well. Regardless, how about you two? Naruto turned to face Sakura and Sasuke on the other side. To put it mildly, Sakura's black hair made her look strange. With the exception of his hair, which was combed to the side rather than being as spiky as it had been, Sasuke didn't really change. Sasuke would undoubtedly resemble the nerdy child in the Kanoha library if he were to wear spectacles. Hee <laughs> hee, Naruto chuckled right away. Gritting his teeth, Sasuke yelled, Shut the hell up! Fakira emerged from the smoke shortly afterward. Yeah, your henge probably isn't any better, Naru. Naruto shot her a sidelong glare. He certainly didn't miss the way she immediately looked away. In front of them was the town's edge getting closer. Fine, now it's time to drive some outlaws back to Kanaha. Naruto looked up at the ceiling and moaned, Ugh, this is so boring. Sasuke gave a snort. Deal with it, Dobe. Frustrated by the injustice of it all, Naruto asked, How come Sakura gets her own room? Kakashi remarked, If you want your own room, just say so, Naruto, from the hotel room's corner. After discovering a largely deserted hotel within the town, they promptly reserved two rooms for a few days. Despite their small size, all of them could fit in the rooms. The blonde asked, How long will this mission take? I don't know the exact amount, but definitely not more than three days. I simply cannot handle this for two more days. Without displaying any signs of arrogance, Naruto said, How about I go now and capture the bandits for myself? Kakashi glanced at him idly through his book. Hmm? Sure, I guess. Take Sasuke or Sakura with you though, and don't wander too far. You remember their identification marks, right? Naruto shot back sarcastically, yeah, yeah, tall, bald, and scars over his face. Big, scary guy is the leader of the bandits. I'm terrified. Sasuke, let's finish this mission off. Kakashi's eyes widened instantly, as though he had forgotten something. Oh, don't forget your henge, Naruto. And Sasuke, I suppose. Sure. The blonde wasted no time in holding up a hand sign. Henge identifying henge. Beginning. Available henges. Ryuji. Apply Ryuji. The previous Naruto had passed away as Ryuji took his place. Naruto gave Sasuke a look. You aren't going to henge? Trust me, it's not worth it. Shrugging, Naruto forced himself to smile internally at the Uchiha's plight. How about this, let's make this a competition between ourselves. Whoever finds the bandits first has to pay the other person with five trips to Ikaraku Ramen. Fair? Sasuke smirked and said, No, I don't like Ikaraku. How about if I win you pay for me at the Inuzuka Grill? No way, that is way too costly. 
My allowance has nearly completely disappeared without Uruka covering my costs at Ikaraku's. However, giving up now would be a betrayal of my pride as Naruto Uzumaki. It is not an option to lose. Okay, let's get this done, exclaimed Naruto, taking off in the direction of the town's east side. The town was a moderate size, neither too large nor too small. There were many workers and traders moving around. It was quite busy. It was a straightforward, orderly town with a few other shops and rather large buildings. Externally. Because it was a free state, Kakashi claimed that it was essentially a haven for missing ninja, bandits and other criminals from all the villages. Naruto searched as a result. And looked around. And continued to search. The sun was setting faster and faster. A hint of fear began to seep into his being. Has Sasuke located the bandits already? Do they intend to wait for my return? Not at all. I can't give up hope just yet. On the eastern edge of the town, there remained a single building. With a suspicious gaze, Naruto said to himself, Hashi Hashi Restaurant, huh? Let's go in then. Pushing open the entrance door, he entered the reasonably busy shop. Even though there were only eight or ten patrons, the atmosphere seemed somewhat busy. From over the serving bar, an elderly man exclaimed, Welcome to Hashi Hashi Restaurant. Naruto took a seat in the corner and examined every client at once. Nope, nobody in the world fits that description. Naruto fiddled with his black hair and muttered to himself, Ugh, why did I even bother? Sasuke has probably found them by now. Whatever, I'll just spend some time here, I guess. However, a few people soon after entered the restaurant. Ugh, I can't find them anywhere. It's fine. How about we stay here for a while? I guess, but there aren't any available seats, are there? Just find the most empty one. Kindly, 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 please. From across Naruto sat a boy who was somewhat tall and a girl who was short. The girl, with her short black hair and peculiarly pink eyes, stood out against the dull restaurant decor in her red uniform and brown flak jacket. The boy dressed very differently, but in the same uniform. He was wearing black spectacles, had a paler face, and had bandages all over his right arm. What a quirky pair. How even meaningful is that red uniform? The girl gave him a quick glance before her eyes brightened. How in the hell? Hey, I'm Kuratsuchi, your name? When Naruto stammered, Naruji, he nearly immediately revealed who he was. Whether or not they knew his name didn't really matter, but keeping it a secret still felt like a mission. Her partner said quietly, Hmm, Ryuji, huh? That's quite an uncommon name in these parts, Ryuji-san. Gradually, drops of sweat began to form on Naruto's chin. Really? I never noticed. What's your name? He recoils his glasses. I am Yubuki Fujomi. Is that all? A bit of an anticlimax. With her short hair draped around her shoulder, Kurtisuchi questioned, Well, Ryuji, what are you doing here exactly? All right, nothing happens now. Naruto spoke without missing a beat, saying, My family are well-known merchants around these areas, so I've come here for some trade by myself. As of right now, I didn't really have anything to do, so I wanted to travel around the town for a bit. Kiritsuchi gave a sympathetic nod. I see, so that means you really know about who comes and goes around here, right? Naruto stopped. Although he didn't want the conversation to go in the direction it was going, he had to continue lying now or it would become suspicious. Correct. Kiritsuchi leaned in to Ryuji's ear, whispering something. So, this is going to be oddly specific, but have you seen a tall, bald man with a whole lot of scars on his face? He's really creepy and stands out in a crowd. He probably had five or six goons around him. Naruto froze even more, if that was possible. These guys, who the hell are they? How come they match the description I received from Kakashi? Unless... Look, noting. Observation accomplished. Kuritsuchi is her name. Titled, Iwa's Princess. Employment, Iwagakir Genin. Level, LV-17. HP, 100,100. MP, 100,100. 
300 chakra. STR 13. Vit 10. Dex 15. Int 6. Wise 4. Luck 5. As Naruto read the otherwise innocent girl's stat line in front of him, his heartbeat quickened. His misfortune was genuinely appalling. This is the kind of place to meet the rival Iwa team. It seemed as though Kami was attempting to discourage him, or something similar. Aside from the primary problem, Naruto discovered she was a level higher than Sasuke's, and thus, a level higher than his own. Do they really have so much more strength than we do? Naruto questioned himself, shocked by what he had witnessed. No, he knew firsthand that the level system wasn't always everything. Naruto, however, noticed something else about her stats. The heading. Iwa Princess? Is she some sort of royalty? The future of the Kanoha Genin didn't appear promising. It was, in fact, awful. I should probably go back to the hotel for the time being and organize an attack for later. However, I also can't let Iwa capture the bandits beforehand. There is now just one remaining choice. I'll just have to keep playing the bluff. Naruto questioned sarcastically, AI may or may not have seen him, to be honest. Why are you interested in knowing? Kurtisuchi turned to face her teammate, who gave her a persistent shake of the head. Then she shrugged and turned back to face Naruto. Well, Ryuji, the truth is, we're both shinobi. Naruto let out a gasp. No way. Smugly, the Iwa Genin nodded. It's true. I don't have my headband right now, considering I'm wearing a disguise, but I can show you a jutsu if you want. Yubuki gave his teammate a scowl. Is it really necessary to tell a civilian about all these things? Anyone could be part of the Konoha team, you know? Kuratsuchi gave Naruto a suspicious look. Are you part of the Kanoha team, Ryuji? Naruto gave a shrug. What's a Kanoha team, exactly? Looking back at Yubuki, Kiritsuchi gave him a I told you so look. See? Whatever, it's clear I got sidetracked. Anyways, do you recall such a man? Naruto gave a head shake. No, never. She sighed, looking down at the table with a dissatisfied expression. Ah, this mission is a pain. In the meanwhile, order some food, Yubuki. Yubuki gave a nod. Sure. Do you want anything, Ryuji? Naruto gave a blink. That caught him off guard. No thanks, actually. HMPH, your loss. Closing his eyes, Naruto reclined in his chair and took in the tranquil surroundings. Then again, though, the door opened, showing off a tall, bald man. Without any delay, Naruto stood up again and studied the man's face more closely. Kuratsuchi followed suit next to him. The man's face was dotted with uneven red hot lines that gave the impression that he was always frowning. He must be the one. Hey Ryuji, murmured Kuratsuchi. Naruto avoided looking at the man who was sitting in a recently created corner. Hmm? I seriously recommend you get out of this shop now. Things are about to get messy. Naruto turned to face the burly man and the thugs standing behind him. A shinobi up against common thieves, given how advanced she was, it shouldn't be too difficult for the genin to defeat them. Although Naruto hadn't examined Yubuki's skill level closely, he could discern that he wasn't a coward either. Kuratsuchi balled her fists. Let's go, Yubuki. Yubuki removed his spectacles and simply nodded. Naruto was at a loss for what to do. Could he just get in here right now and take care of the bandits himself? That is not feasible at all. He was probably not going to be able to defeat them both at the same time because it was a two versus one situation. Frustrated, Naruto shook his head. Damn it! Kiritsuchi wasted no time at all. She didn't take things slow or easy like her grandfather, the politician, instead she went after her goals as quickly as possible. Even demise. Not exactly killing though. She couldn't actually fight for real because the mission required her to capture the bandits alive. As a result, she and Yubuki were at a significant disadvantage because the bandits had no intention of leaving her alive. The main target was sidetracked by the menu in front of him when she threw a kunai at him. 
Naturally, she aimed it a little bit to the right to avoid really hitting the man. That ought to frighten him just a little bit. However, the sound of the kunai encrusting itself in the wood was never heard. The kunai was caught in the target's hand. Kiritsuchi ought to have realized then that the man was no ordinary bandit. Naturally though, she didn't. That was prevented by her arrogance. Rather, she lunged ahead. With a deep voice, the man asked, Someone wants to fight? To the entire small restaurant. Everyone in the restaurant had fled in fear by this point. She gestured to her partner. Yubuki, take care of the rest of the gang, I'll manage this guy by myself. Of course. It's too late to stop here, but Sensei would have advised me to wait for him to arrive. First came Tejutsu. Kiritsuchi took the opening blow with confidence, thinking the fight would be simple. The scarred man sidestepped immediately after she swept her legs beneath him. The hook that came next was barely visible to her. Too quickly, feeling the punches force through the air as it pushed against her face, the genin jumped backward. The altercation was now taking place outside the eatery. Her gaze grew strained. Lava release, bullet rain jutsu. Kiritsuchi's mouth produced balls of lava that emitted light and fired rapidly in the direction of the adversary. The deep voice raised its voice again. Water release, water wall jutsu. A wall of water blasted through the earth below, creating an almost impenetrable structure of water that completely blocked the approaching attacks. Ah, he is a shinobi as a result. Not important. A kick landed on Kiritsuchi's stomach, and she gasped as the force of it propelled her quickly in the direction of the building across from the restaurant. I may need to start taking this guy seriously. Ugh, finally. Saving that owner from the bandits was seriously annoying. When Kiritsuchi heard the familiar voice, his eyes widened. Ryuji? After assisting the owner to safety, the second Naruto quickly left the building, obliging Yubuki's continuing battle with the other thieves. Anyhow, it was immediately clear from a quick look that the tall one was the strongest. After taking a quick look around, Naruto fixed his gaze on the man in front of him. Ugh, finally! Saving that owner from the bandits was seriously annoying. Yuji? Kiritsuchi's voice went unheeded by Naruto. In a way, the strategy was straightforward. Before a shadow clone could take him back to the hotel, he had to finish off the man in front of him as soon as possible. Then completely sabotage Yubuki's battle, produce more shadow clones to help those bandits return, and if needed, even vanquish Yubuki. He had a plan to defeat the target in front of him. But he had to remain out of Kiritsuchi's sight in order to do that. It's a good thing Kakashi showed him the ideal jutsu for that. After taking a deep breath, Naruto performed a series of ineffective hand gestures. Water release, hiding in mist technique. The water droplets in the surrounding air started to get thicker and thicker, eventually condensing into a mist that completely covered the road. The mist grew thicker still as Naruto continued to force his chakra into the jutsu. The target exclaimed, what the hell, in exasperation. Naruto was able to comprehend. He was also unable to see anything, even as the jutsu user. He did, however, know someone who could. Call forth Shadow Zabuza. Tentacles of dark matter formed, thick but not quite tangible, as the matter spun around itself. Naruto was aware that their movements appeared arbitrary, but that wasn't the case. The notorious Zabusa Mamachi was back to life. Missed? There was no need for Naruto to waste any more time. Zabusa, I know you don't want to serve me, but we seriously need to defeat this guy. With a growl, Shadow Zabusa formed a mass of shadows for his sword. Whatever, there's finally some action, brat. Who do I need to kill? Active skill, level 1 shadow extraction. Info. As your skill level rises, the 50 MP that shadows drain every minute will decrease. The first extraction requires 20 MP. Zabuza had just declared that he would kill the man, but Naruto tried to ignore it and concentrate on the foe in front of him. He had to defeat the target as soon as possible, but he also couldn't let him die. 
while it persisted, Kiratsuchi probably wouldn't be able to see in the mist and wouldn't want to waste time trying to fight here. Would she try to support Yubuki during his fight, perhaps? They were only supposed to be bandits, but since the leader was also a shinobi, it wouldn't come as a shock if the others were. Naruto, taking a kunai out of his pouch, asked inquiringly, Zabusa, are you able to locate him? Zabusa responded right away, Of course I can, seeming insulted that Naruto had even asked. The problem is that I'm too weak right now. Yes, Naruto didn't even remember that. Though powerful, Shadow Zabusa was nothing compared to the real Zabusa. The summon was most likely around Chunin level, though he may have been physically even lower. His current standing in the competing ranks was only due to experience and skill. Undoubtedly, the fight would not have lasted as long if Zabusa had been in his previous form. Naruto shut his eyelids. Now, in the middle of so much mist, he could not rely on sight, he strained his ears to listen intently and deeply. He could hear heavy footsteps and bustling all around him. In front of us. Employ Tajutsu Uchiha, going into action. Skill, level 3 activated Uchiha Clan Tajutsu. Every minute, usage consumes 15 MP points. The user does not lose MP while using this skill for one minute. After a month of training with Kakashi, his skill reached level 3 and quickly took control of his body. Naruto leaped into the air, dodging the enormous body that was heading straight towards the area he had been in. The genin flinched, had he been struck by that. With well-honed efficiency, Zabuza swung his enormous sword toward the man's neck crook. The man gave a quick slap to his hands and grasped the fabled sword in his hands. Zabusa's eyes widened, then narrowed again. Squeezing the top of the handle even harder, he managed to free the sword from the man's tight grasp before lunging down and slicing at his legs. The target simply leaped away from the attack, but Zabusa retained his sword in the process. That sword, I think I recognize it from somewhere. Regardless, I'm not going to ask what type of jutsu this is, Kids these days with their Keke Genkai and Clan Jutsus, why make it so hard for the rest of us normal ninja? The man whined before his tone hardened. Doesn't matter I guess, after this one less Keke Genkai left in this world. My name is Zenki I think it's fair for you to know the name of the last person you'll ever meet, right? Although Naruto thought it strange that the target, or Zenki for that matter, called his shadow extraction a Keke Genkai, it also made some sense. It was reasonable to presume that a new jutsu that was practically unfathomable to the naked, I belonged to some kind of bloodline. But in this instance it wasn't. Zenki moved at a practiced pace, flashing through hand signs. Wind release, great breakthrough. His mouth unleashed a torrent of wind, the jutsu's intent evident. He's attempting to blow the mist away, but it's unlikely that this will be successful. Naruto pondered in his head. Even though the wind was blowing extremely strongly, some mist was still present. That was because Zenki used a much smaller amount of chakra for his own jutsu than Naruto had used for the jutsu. Though not much, Zenki was now able to see. You're just a kid. Ha, I'll have fun destroying you. Zenki then took off running. Naruto encountered him midway, relying on his teijutsu to sustain his combat. The muscular, bald man threw a wide hook that moved absurdly quickly, but Naruto quickly ducked at the last second. Using the gap as his advantage, Naruto punched Zenki in the stomach, leaving it wide open to his strike. All Zenki could do was laugh. Oh no. After grabbing Naruto's leg with a violent lunge, the man lifted the boy into the air. Despite Naruto's best efforts, Zenki's physical strength was too much for him to overcome. A decisive blow appeared unavoidable. Zabusa though was still in the battle. The legendary swordsman slashed his sword at Zenki's neck again, this time right behind him. Zenki was forced to back off and quickly released Naruto in an attempt to evade his attack. The slash on Zenki's back said otherwise, but it sort of worked. Blood spilled onto the ground, even showing through the partly dense, missed its ruby hue. Naruto smiled at what he saw. 
It was all-out brute force against an all-arounder and swordsman like Naruto. I have to hit him hard enough to knock him out. However, given how much stronger this guy is physically, I might not be able to accomplish something similar with my own strength. Shadow Clone Jutsu About a dozen clones materialized all around the genin, hurrying toward the opponent in front of them. Zenki smirked and shifted into a casual stance. Oh, the little kitten wants to add some more players on the field, she asked. It's all right, come at me. For a split second, Zenki's muscles clenched and he leaped out of his still state. His clones did, in fact, give it their all. However, it was entirely pointless. Two of his clones were instantly destroyed by the baldy's punches and kicks because of their incredible strength and speed, which was impossible to parry or deflect. After the little altercation, Zabuza snorted and gave Naruto a serious look. I might have a plan. Naruto quickly swiveled his head to hear the good news. But you might have to take a good hit or two, and I need a way to get near that man. Naruto winced, picturing the agony. Zenki's hit song? Yes, that would be quite painful. A great deal. And how about approaching the abomination without being annihilated? That was also a lot to ask for. However, they could give it a shot. Naruto called upon a clone. He glanced thoughtfully at Zabuza's weapon. Your sword. The shadow grinned, giving the undead man a really unsettling expression. With dread, Naruto glanced at his MP. There are just 50 left. Which meant Zabusa had just a minute left. Disabling his Uchiha clan Tejutsu skill quickly allowed him to avoid wasting any more MP. Their only opportunity was this. Every one of the clones was destroyed. Zenki scowled at the two figures that were still in front of him. There you are. Shadow Zabusa gave his sword a hard clench. Here. With terrifying speed, he threw his sword, the blade turning as it flew in the direction of its target. Zenki could not afford to try stopping the weapon with his hands, knowing how destructive it was. Which left me with just one choice. Dodge. Zenki dodged the blade, swerving to the side to avoid the blow. Zenki eyed the shadow amusingly and said, Ah, now I recognize you. You're Zabuza Mamachi of the Mist, correct? You don't seem as strong as the stories describe you as. And you're just as smart as you appear, dumbass. After Zabusa's blade vanished into smoke, Naruto materialized in an instant. It was only fitting that Zabusa employed the same tactic that had been employed against him before. Zenki's gaze expanded. Naruto's hands traversed the indications of an additional jutsu. He had actually learned the first jutsu from Kakashi, who reluctantly taught him the next. Water release, surging sea. A massive stream of water shot out of Naruto's mouth and toward Zenki's direction. The man was heavily doused by the water tsunami, but he remained perfectly still. The liquid made similar collisions with the surrounding objects. There was still a lot of water on the ground, giving the otherwise uneven road a blue tint. Standing, Naruto felt his own jutsu overwhelm him completely. His clothes were drenched, and his black hair was spread out across his forehead. He painted a little bit and then inhaled deeply. This was something he had to do. Naruto sent a chakra pulse down to his feet and started to run on water. Inconvenient, Zenki smirked as he brushed some water from his clothes. At least now it will be even more fun to beat the life out of you and that idiot girl. Kiratsuchi, how in the hell is she even here? After giving those thoughts some thought, Naruto shook his head. He had to get up. With a smile, the man flashed his surprisingly white teeth. All right then, let's do this. A quick kick passed right over Naruto's head and he ducked. Seizing the chance to get nearer to the enormous creature, he struck his jaw with his fist. The attack made contact and crunched satisfyingly. Indeed, however, Zenki laughed once more. Naruto became utterly transparent his blood turned cold. In an instant, Zenki was in front of him, roughly grabbing his face. With one hand, he literally lifted the genin, then slammed his face into the rocky road below. When the two made contact, Naruto's nose broke instantly, 
causing the organ to start leaking blood. He gasped in pain. The impact lessened slightly and the water turned a murky red. How does it feel? The man inquired, wearing a menacing grin. With a simple smile, Naruto tasted the metallic blood that had come to his lips by accident. Great. How on earth did I do that? Zenki's expression briefly changed to one of rage before returning to his usual smile. It won't be feeling great for long, trust me. Like a rag doll, Zenki threw his body up into the air and then leaped forward. Naruto's rapidly spinning body prevented him from having a clear view of his surroundings, making his entire vision a nightmare. With a loud splash, a leg embedded itself in Naruto's stomach, causing him to fall forward and lurch forward. The anguish was intolerable. Quite possibly the worst feeling he had ever experienced. This training was far superior to Kakashi's. By this point, Naruto's henge had vanished, exposing his considerably smaller frame and blonde hair to the public. Pow! The level of vitality has increased by one. Zenki folded his arms across himself. Eh? You're even more of a kid than I thought you were. Should I feel bad now? I'm not really feeling very pitiful though. What's your name, kid? Naruto got up gradually. His clothes were ripped, his face was bleeding, and he was ill-proportioned. The genin just grinned. Gotcha. Water release, water prison technique. After all, Zabusa was dubbed the silent killer from the beginning. The man was quickly engulfed in a rotating ball of dense water, which trapped him inside. Zabusa's hand was submerged in the sphere, maintaining the jutsu's effectiveness. That was the true motive behind Naruto's use of the surging sea jutsu, in order to best prepare the ground for Zabusa's prison method. Of course, Zabusa could have used the same technique without the presence of water, but doing so would have required a lot more time and effort in order to trap Zenki, a physical monster. Inside the sphere, Zenki thrashed and cried out, but in vain. He kept punching the sphere, and it responded by trembling and shaking. Naruto made an effort not to gasp in shock. How is his extraordinary strength? Is that his normal body, or is he using chakra? Zabusa the shadow muttered. Get done with it quickly, kid. It's hard keeping a guy like him inside. With a sigh, Naruto put his hands on his knees. That was extremely exhausting. Eager to put an end to the fight, he ran in Zabusa's direction. Look, we just need him unconscious, Naruto stated sarcastically. With the other hand, Shadow Zabuza snarled and brandished his enormous sword asking, Unconscious? Why not kill the bastard? Naruto anticipated this would occur. The mission said. With a moan, the water prison shook. With shock, Naruto's eyes grew wide. The jail was collapsing. The man kept launching punches after punches into the sphere, and the layer of water surrounding him got thinner and thinner. In a split second, the man was set free. Zenki gave a deafening roar and jumped high to try and get away. However, Naruto had already passed him by. Sword was Naruto's first outburst at Zabuza. The blonde caught the shadow black sword that Zabuza threw at her like a spear in midair. When a sudden weight pulled Naruto to the ground, he grunted. Naruto spun Kubikirabacho and struck the man's head with the blunt side of the sword before Zenki could even react. Zenki had lost consciousness. Shadow Zabusa arched an eyebrow in admiration. Nice one, brat. Caution, there are no MP left. All MP-related abilities are being turned off. With the sword and shadow vanishing into thin air, Naruto was left by himself, bleeding and hurt. The regeneration began to take hold, and he collapsed onto his posterior, panting and clawing for some way to regain strength. Three clones were conjured by Naruto. Clone one gave a salute. Boss. Naruto stood up once more and gave the order, take this body to Kakashi Sensei and explain it's the bandit the mission talked about. And you? His clone inquired with concern. Outfit Ryuji. Shining back at the clones was Ryuji. I've got some work to do. He had a plan on how he was going to extract the last of the bandits from the Iwa team. 
With a sigh of relief, Kiritsuchi dispatched the final bandit with ease. Though they were by no means Chunin level, they were unquestionably Shinobi. And now that other guy needs to be dealt with. As usual, Yubuki pushed up his glasses. He gave the moaning bandits in the restaurant's corner a disgusted snort. What about the leader? Kiritsuchi was unsure. I'm not too sure, actually. She was certain that she had heard Ruji's voice then, and she discovered that trying to aid the fight after the Miss Jutsu was released was futile. Given the difficult time Yubuki was having with the remaining bandits, it was definitely a good thing she returned as well. Despite their lack of individual strength and coordination, they were superior in numbers and could have easily defeated him. The sound of footsteps caused her to turn around. Ryuji entered the restaurant gingerly, his eyes wide and alert. Kiritsuchi's eyes narrowed. By now, it was obvious that Ruji was anything but a typical merchant in the town. The boy apologized with a smile that met her eyes. I can explain everything. Kiritsuchi's eyebrow shot upward. Like your merchant family? Ruji flinched. Yeah, that was a lie. Most of what I told you guys was a lie, actually. Are those the remaining bandits? Yubuki gave a curt nod. And what does it matter to you? Nothing, I'm just worried they might wake up again. Kiritsuchi affirmed. They won't, I'm sure of it, we beat to a pulp. Oh great, how about we talk over at that corner? I know I don't seem the most trustworthy right now, but I'm sure I can convince you otherwise, Princess of Iwagakure, and of course, the well-renowned Yubuki Fujomi. Ryuji said with an amiable grin. Kiritsuchi was taken aback. How was my status known to him? Is he one of Gramp's spies? If the old man sent someone to watch over her while she went on the mission, she wouldn't be at all surprised, especially to a place like this. Yubuki glanced at his teammate, who confirmed with a nod. We accept your offer. Ryuji joked. Haha, you don't need to be so serious, Yubuki-san, and laughed. I don't care if you trust me or not, but I assure you that I'm on your side. The three of them moved toward the restaurant's corner, where the surrounding tables surrounded them. It was at that precise moment that Ruji realized Kiritsuchi had completely lost sight of the remaining bandits. Kiritsuchi gave the boy in front of her a fierce look. Well Ryuji, can you introduce yourself again, this time the truth? Of course. Well, to start off, I was sent directly here by the Iwagakure Shinobi forces. Something about a Chunin pre-examination, am I correct? Yes, that is why we were sent here as well. But I haven't seen you in any of the other Genin teams, have I? Yubuki had said. That's right, I'm not in any of the Genin teams. I was sent here to monitor the examination or competition between Konoha and Iwa, and help protect the coming Iwa team if necessary. To be honest, I didn't expect you guys to come so fast, so I was slightly unprepared for your arrival. For that I'm sorry, Ruji said with a scowl. By now Kiritsuch's mind was made up. At best, the person standing before them was sincere. She had made Gramps swear not to treat her like a child again, so she was still upset that he had sent someone to watch over her, but that was a story for another time. She gave Ruji a cheery smile. Well, our John and sensei will probably come soon. Do you want to come back to Iwa with us? I'm assuming you beat the leader, right? J. John and sensei, Ruji made an erratic stammer. Yes? Ah, uh, sure. And yes, for the leader, he's completely knocked out for now. We can go and get them later. Yubuki furrowed his brow, perplexed. Why not right now? Ryuji gave a shrug. Your wish. And also, one last thing, I'm sorry. For what purpose? Ryuji became a billow of smoke. Kiritsuchi abruptly got up from her seat after gasping in shock. Yubuki performed the same action, omitting the gasp, searching for any sign of the black-haired shinobi. Kiritsuchi dashed to the restaurant's entrance. However, something felt off. The atmosphere seemed different, though she was unable to put her thoughts into words. Yubuki said softly from inside the restaurant, Um, Kiritsuchi. What? 
Kiritsuchi exclaimed, glancing frantically at the deserted road ahead of her before turning to face inside. The bandits are gone. How? Kiritsuchi gave a deafening cry to herself, coming to her own conclusion. The bandits had vanished from view. They were all taken by Ruji, which implied that they had been set up from the beginning. Naruto was thinking about the memories as he hurried back to the hotel. Whoa, did that really work? The genin cast doubt on his thoughts. He had prepared his clone for the possibility that Kiritsuchi and Yubuki would have at the very least demanded some sort of identity confirmation. He had no idea that he didn't have to do that either. Naruto gave an evil laugh. Though it hurt to lie to the kindly Iwa genin, he couldn't help himself tricking people was enjoyable. His entire act served as a much simpler means of achieving his objectives without requiring any kind of combat. He felt compelled to lie as well because he couldn't possibly hope to defeat them both at once. Here I am, Naruto became aware. He banged loudly on the door. Kakashi Sensei, it's me, Naruto. A second later, Kakashi's voice came muffled. Password? Ah, what password? Come in. With a click, Naruto opened the door, grinning at the sight of a vanquished Sasuke and apathy from Kakashi. Naruto grinned smugly and gave Sasuke a knowing look. Did you find the bandits, Sasuke-kun? Sasuke just gave a grunt. No. Well, guess who did? Come in, men. The unconscious or horrifyingly injured bodies were immediately dropped onto the floor by Naruto's clones as they stormed into the room. The bodies of ten bandits, all of whose descriptions matched those in the mission list, were arranged on the ground. His clones gave a salute and then vanished in an instant. A second later, Naruto took off his own henge in an attempt to make his point more clearly. Once more, Kakashi gave the men a blank stare. You found and beat all of them up? Naruto gave his head a scratch. Ah well, it's a long story. I guess I'll give a short summary. I found the bandits, beat them up, and brought them here after a scramble with the Iwa team. Actually, that was a bit too detailed, sorry. Sasuke gave him a strange look. Kakashi just gave a shrug. Naruto scowled. He anticipated a stronger impression from them. A second later, Sakura burst through the door, startled out of her own room by the loud commotion. What happened? Naruto greeted her and went on. Like I said it's a long story, but pretty much. Grasping his forehead, Sasuke begged, please not again. It's fine, I owe you some ramen. Naruto grinned triumphantly. Indeed, it was a huge success. A moment later, Naruto said, um, so what do we do with these bodies? Kakashi said, I'll take care of that. For the time being, switch your henge so the Iwa team doesn't recognize you, as he started to approach the bodies. Biting his finger, Kakashi let some blood show through his pale skin. He touched the floor, and then the floor was surrounded by a ring of black seals that were sealed with ink. Then there was more smoke, and a pack of dogs emerged? Hey, this is all getting too crazy. One week later. Naruto's gaze lingered on the strange, perfectly straight rock before him. You guys can get out now. Slowly, Kanohamaru and his two companions crawled out of the apparatus. How uneasy did that feel? Naruto-sensei. The blonde let out a moan. During his entire stay outside of Konoha, he completely forgot about all of this. Kanohamaru screamed, pointing at his face, You promised. Naruto searched his mind for the words he had spoken. Promised what? You said you would play ninja with us today? Naruto flinched. Was that what I said really? Fakura gave her teammate a sly smile. Really Naruto? Playing ninja with little kids? Not that I can really blame her. Konohamaru inquired. Boss, who's the girl with the big forehead? Oh no. Sakura's furrowed brow furrowed. What the hell did you say? With her eyes widening in fury, the girl looked truly angry as Kanohamaru and his friends fled from her in fear. Then Kanohamaru crashed, though, into a person. Stop it, little one, the person snarled. 
The individual in question exuded a spooky aura while sporting a black, baggy bodysuit, and strange forehead protector was stuck on where his forehead should have been. Why are these people from another village here? Naruto pondered. Wait, what? Chunin exams. It's unlikely that many more from other villages will arrive anytime soon, so I shouldn't be too shocked. It's just a misunderstanding in this case, right? However, the eerie child didn't end there. Taking Konohamaru by the shirt collar, he hauled him up. That seriously hurt, snot face? Konohamaru gave a dismaying grunt. Naruto's gaze grew strained. Fakira truly apologized, saying, Put him down, it was my fault anyways, since she was partially to blame. The boy who was not from abroad, a girl, then spoke up. Put him down, Kankiro, if he comes. Kankiro smiled. A, it's fine. I'm bored anyways, I don't really care. A sharp pain pulsed through Kankiro's arm, forcing him to let go of the child. Even though Naruto's kick wasn't very powerful, it was sufficient to release Kanohamaru. Passively, Naruto stood before the boy. But he was furious within. In response, Kankiro attempted to fling a cuff in Naruto's direction, giving the impression that he was equally enraged. That said, Kankiro was incredibly slow in comparison to Zenki. Naruto's face shifted just an inch, completely avoiding the fist, then he launched himself down and kicked low to sweep his feet. With a thud, Kankiro fell flat on his back. The Konoha Genin awaited the boy's return with patience. Kankiro yelled, You'll regret that, punk, as he punched Naruto widely. This time, he didn't have to dodge. As the sand rose up in front of Kankiro, it came to life and completely stopped his movement by enclosing his hands like handcuffs. A fresh foe stepped onto the battlefield. You're a disgrace, Kankiro. Naruto glanced at the recent arrival. The boy's red hair was the only distinguishing feature as he stood upside down. He looked up at Naruto. The blonde shuddered. The least he could tell was that this one was different. Take note. Noting. Perhaps at least level 17? Hopefully not nearly 20 though. The observation was unsuccessful. The target is set too high. There was almost a tangible sense of Naruto's shock. Indeed, the Chunin exams were going to be crazy. Naruto did not take his eyes off the red-haired boy. He made an effort not to avert his gaze. His plain brown clothes were unremarkable, but the strange peanut-shaped cocoon on his back held a sinister air. Of course, that was not really doing the thing justice when I compared it to a peanut. This guy seems to be under pressure of some kind. What is it? Naruto grimaced slightly, thinking. Pow. Warning. We've found bloodlust. That's precisely what it was. Lust for blood. Was there a skill or method that needed to be developed? And if so, how is it learned? Was the talent intrinsic something the individual possessed from birth? The boy went on. To think you're out here fooling around with little children, it seems to me that you've forgotten the reason we are here. Kenkuro's face scrunched up in frustration as he clenched his fists. They started at first, Gara. The kid, he... Gara gave a slight tilt to his head. One more word and you're dead. As Gara threatened, the atmosphere abruptly heated up a few degrees. Whether the Tsunagenin was a real threat or not eluded Naruto. But judging from the amount of perspiration on Kankuro's face, it was safe to say that he was. I, I'm sorry, Gara. It was my fault entirely, Kankuro stammered, looking down. Gara just nodded before reversing course and falling to Kankuro's side. Kankuro sighed in relief as the sand that had been impeding the taller Genin's movement vanished into the earth below. Glancing over at Naruto, Gara said, And who are you? Naruto turned his head to align with Gara's line of sight, only to see the recognizable face of Kanoha's lone Uchiha. Sasuke smirked and said, It's only polite to introduce yourself before asking someone else. Or do they not learn that in Suna? As he moved to stand next to Naruto, Gara remained silent. I'm Gara of the desert, these are my siblings, Kankiro and Temeri. Who are you? What? He made threats to murder his own brother? With horrified eyes, Naruto realized. 
What specific type of boy is he? I'm Sasuke Uchiha, and these are my teammates, Naruto and Sakura. There was no sign of recognition from the Tsuna Shinobi. With her arms crossed, Sakura sternly questioned, Why are there Tsuna Shinobi in Kanoha land? You are our allies, but you simply can't cross borders like that, can you? With a sort of ID displayed to the group, Temeri badgered, Well, you aren't the brightest of the bunch, are you? Were you not informed of what's happening in your own village? Sakura and Sasuke just observed, perplexed. However, Naruto was determined to keep his village's reputation intact in the eyes of an outsider. Of course we know, Naruto exclaimed, laughing aloud. It's the Chunin exams, and you guys have come to compete in it. After nodding, Kankiro narrowed his eyes suspiciously, which seemed strange because he had paint all over his face. Then how come your teammates were so surprised at our presence? You don't exactly look like Shinobi, so it's to be expected you guys were very early, Naruto reprimanded, obviously referencing Kankuro's peculiar clothing. Sasuke could not contain his laughter. When Kankuro heard Gaara snort, he became agitated and eventually withered. You, what's your name? Your full name, Gaara inquired, putting his brother's teasing aside. Naruto dug his hands into his pockets and said, Naruto Uzumaki at your service. Make a swish, a tendril of sand shot toward Naruto at terrifying speeds, shooting through the air like an arrow itself, while his body moved on its own. He looked to his right, panting, and saw a conjured spear of sand that was inches from piercing into the place where his face had once been, floating temporally before falling uselessly to the ground. How in the world is this guy flawed? Huh, you dodged, Gara uttered, making an almost shocked sound. Now it will be even more satisfying to kill you in the exams, Naruto Uzumaki. Kankiro Temeri, let's leave. The exceedingly eccentric trio left the premises without a doubt. Sasuke smiled. There's no doubt that the exams will be fascinating. Fukuda was taken aback by the encounter and froze. How in the world am I going to survive if this is how all the other genin are? Kanohamaru just gave his boss an admiring glance. Boss, you're too cool. Even Naruto was unable to smile at the compliments. Having felt Gara's intense bloodlust for himself, he had known from the moment he met him that he was unique. It was higher than Zabuza's prior to his death, but it was nothing in comparison to the first Hakage replica he had to battle. And how could a youngster that was roughly Naruto's age have so much pressure? His observe had the solution. He had ignored the notification, making sure to remember to accept when he was done interacting with Gara. Will player accept a condensed observation? In agreement or disagreement? Indeed. Gara is her name. Theme. The one-tailed Jinchuriki. Working as a Sunagakure Genin. Level. HP 100,100. MP 100,100. Chakra? STR? How come? Vid? Dex? Int? Wise? Luck? He shared the same Jinchuriki status as Naruto, but he was not welcoming, kind, or merciful in the slightest, unlike Naruto. Naruto trembled. Yes, the Chunin exams will be difficult. No. Oh. Kakashi nodded to Naruto, who looked up. The sensei with the silver hair was perched atop one of the bridge's pillars. Using the chakra technique to which the three were now well accustomed, he started to descend slowly. Naruto grinned. He would have been completely shocked if he had seen that a few months earlier. The degree to which things changed so quickly was amusing. The genin actually shook his head if he never understood his system. It was pointless to consider meaningless ifs and other hypothetical scenarios. The truth is that he gained the system and as a result grew stronger. Well, it was pretty obvious by now. But you're in the Chunin exams. Congratulations, Kakashi gently stroked the back of his head and said, seemingly devoid of enthusiasm. He passed a piece of paper to each of the three of them. These are your applications. With interest, Naruto examined his own application. Application for Chunin exam. Naruto Uzumaki's name. Sensei, Hadei Kakashi. 
This application serves as proof that, following your confirmation following the successful completion of a B-rank mission assigned to your team, you are hereby nominated to take the Chunin exams. Naruto cast a bewildered glance at his sensei. Why does it say the word confirmation? Shouldn't we already be in the exam? You were merely nominated for the exam. If you don't want to enter, you don't need to show up. If you want to, sign the paper and turn it in tomorrow at room 301 tomorrow. Naruto stole a quick look at Sakura. If she tried to skip the exam, he couldn't hold it against her or hold her accountable. Her conflicted expression was fairly obvious. Perhaps a little inspiration would do. Don't worry sensei, all of us will be there tomorrow. You'll have three new chunins on your team to keep you safe, Naruto laughed. The word all caused Sakura's head to raise. I apologize to Naruto for popping your bubble, but I don't see any of you turning into chunin, Kakashi deadpanned as he leaped onto the bridge's level section. Naruto questioned, perplexed by his sensei's casual admission, eh? Fakura and Sasuke's questions were blocked by Kakashi with a raised hand. At a maximum, only one or two shinobi become chunin each year, and that was before this whole international business started. The other villages wouldn't send any regular shinobi to represent them, they are going to send the best of the best of their genin. There's a lot more competition this time around, with a variety of techniques you've never seen before. You can overestimate yourself if you want, but underestimating your opponent is even more dangerous. Sasuke gave a small, agreeable hum. Some villages are making legendary shinobi become janin just to teach some genin for the exams. Rumors say well, you'll see once you start the exams, that's all for now. Before the janin could depart, Naruto let out a yell. Wait, sensei. Hmm? Desperate for any information that would improve his chances, Naruto asked, What do you need us to do to become Chunin? Kakashi was correct. There had to be more people like Gara out there given the number of genin taking the exam. Kuratsuchi was a monster too. The opponents that the rookie genin faced had a year more of experience. The only thing you need to do is improve tremendously, and I mean at a very fast rate. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Naruto could not contain the laughter that came out of his mouth. He received a chuckle from Kakashi and the other members of Team 7. Better? Quickly? Improving was something that Naruto could do quickly. Naruto stood in front of room 301's door, idly staring at his stats. Naruto Uzumaki's name. Stormbringer is the title. Vocation. Kanoha Genin. Level. LV10. HP 100,100. MP 100,100. Chakra 2,000, 2,000. STR 10. Vit 12. Dex 9. Int 6. Wise 4. Luck 2. Present competencies. Jutsu Shadow Clone Level 4. Level 1 Shadow Extraction. Category Sorcerer. Points for attributes 0. It came as no great surprise when he reached level 10. Naruto gained a great deal of experience from just fighting Zenki and completing numerous side missions. And that's not even talking about how much training Kakashi had given him, which increased his stats. Acquiring two Jutsus was undoubtedly a worthwhile experience, as it improved his chakra regulation and self-control, ultimately accelerating his level advancement. He had invested his points in strength, intelligence and dexterity when he leveled up twice. Vitality was disregarded because of how frequently the number increased as a result of his own training, even though it had dropped in recent weeks. Naruto concentrated on intelligence, next since it was evident that intelligence had the greatest influence on his mentality. It didn't exactly transform his personality, nor did it endow him with an advanced vocabulary like that of a seasoned writer. But he discovered that he could now speak the words he already knew more clearly and that his perspective had changed. His deduction abilities were tingling as he considered all the things that were racing through his rather full mind. It was a level 3 skill, so not very useful right now. Alternatively put, it demonstrated how little he truly made an effort to infer. However, Naruto trusted his instincts. 
he turned to face Sasuke and Sakura, who appeared to have the same epiphany. Sasuke grinned. It's the wrong floor, isn't it? Seems so. The Genjutsu began to disappear, exposing the sign, which read 201. Naruto let out a sigh. How in the world could that fool a genin? They then proceeded to the floor above. It wasn't a very long walk, but it wasn't very enjoyable either. With haste, Team 7 entered the actual room 301, into a room that was absolutely crammed with Shinboi. Not a single person was familiar to Naruto. The incoming Team 7 did their best not to falter under the attention, but the genin's stares soon turned to them. Sakura blushed nervously and failed miserably, which was understandable given that she wasn't accustomed to it all. Sasuke was accustomed to the attention because he was the last remaining Uchiha in Kanoha. It was ingrained in Naruto for darker reasons. Being the Kyubai's container, he was often the target of negative rather than positive stares. Was that weight? Black hair, short, and a mood fit for a king. Kurtisuchi was taking the exam, as were Yubuki, her teammates, and an unknown individual. However, how? The Iwa team had failed their own task because they had finished the mission while they had not. So, they have no business being in this room at this time. As he observed the girl conversing animatedly with her team, Naruto pondered. Even though she was a princess, it wasn't completely out of the question that her family had used some influence to get her to pass the tests. Or that teams that didn't pass the qualifying exams had access to some kind of backup exam but it made no difference. There was one more formidable opponent in the exam, which was the only drawback. Naturally, Garo was present. He wasn't easily missed either, even with the rather sizable crowd, at least in part because of his striking red hair, which jutted out like an apple from a tree. Iwa. Suna. Bravo. Kiri. Without a doubt, the exam was an international chunin. Furthermore, it made no sense at all given that many of these villages were currently enemies and, worse, harbored intense animosity toward one another. To make matters worse, Iwa was actually present in Kanoha. Naruto-san. Naruto heard the familiar voice and tried not to groan. Rock Lee let everyone else in the room know that he was calling out to Naruto while he stood proudly. I challenge you to a duel. How come I had to be the one? With everyone staring at him, Naruto asked, A duel right now, with incredulity. Lee said, Of course. I've fought Sasuke-san already, and that day I did not really want to fight you as well since he needed some medical attention. Naruto made an effort to consider the circumstances objectively. It would have been perfectly reasonable for him to turn down Lee's offer and avoid a host of other issues. Still, he was curious to find out just how much he had progressed since Wave. To be sure, his battle with Zanki was not an ordinary one, and his employment of Shadow Zabusa raised some red flags. Since he was definitely not allowed to use his special abilities in public during the Chunin exams, he needed to see how much he could accomplish without them. It would be unpopular with the rest of the world to have the ability to literally raise the dead and use it for his own purposes. What would people do for a Byakugan's ability, which they would believe to be unique among Kekai Genkai, if they killed and kidnapped children for him? However, he was even more motivated to accept the challenge by something else. Pow! Created new quest. Rock, paper, Lee. Accept Lee's challenge and engage in combat. Quest reward. Gain 1000 experience points and 2 Taijutsu levels Lee's respect. Failure give up on ever becoming a master of Teijutsu. Is the quest accepted by the player? In agreement or disagreement? Thus, Naruto gave in. Sakura furrowed her brow. That's the Naruto I'm familiar with. Let's go to one of the open corridors, there's a lot of space available. Well, we can't fight here, can we? Naruto gestured for them to move. Lee gestured to Tenten and Neji, his teammates. The latter waved back, and the former just scoffed. He hasn't really changed at all. Naruto chuckled to himself, telling his teammates, Sasuke is Sakura, I'll be back in a few minutes, Naruto said. Before long, there were no onlookers as they were in the open. 
With his signature pose already established, Lee questioned. You can use any jutsu of your wish, Naruto-san. Whoever is knocked unconscious or admits defeat is the loser. Are you ready? Do you know any jutsu? I truly don't want to sabotage this place. Let's see, Lee is skilled in taijutsu, so I'll need to use other strategies to defeat him. Given how Sasuke performed in his previous battle with Lee, using his taijutsu would be tantamount to wishing for death. Somehow, I have to outmaneuver him. Naruto leaped backward a few steps. He nodded and motioned for the fight to begin. Lee moved quickly. It was one thing to see it with his own eyes, it was another entirely to experience it. A flying kick was aimed towards Naruto's head, but he dodged it and used his crossed arms to block a straight punch to the chest. The blonde winced slightly at the force that knocked her back. As he moved forward, Naruto intended to launch his own attack. However, it was difficult given how nimble his opponent was. Lee simply sidestepped with his hands behind his back when the Jinchuriki attempted to strike his stomach. He then tried a wild uppercut to the jaw. With a swift movement, Lee sidestepped the uppercut and delivered a loud haymaker to Naruto's stomach. Ugh! Naruto staggered back in agony, but he maintained his composure. A few seconds later, he was kicked back several meters, coughing slightly as he felt a bruise forming near his chest. That's gonna heal, I shouldn't worry about it. He didn't really like that the Kyubai was inside of him, but if it came with such advantages as regeneration, it didn't really matter in the end. Naruto could not count on one hand how many times he had won a fight or even survived because of the Nine Tails' healing capabilities. Right now, he had no way of beating Lee if he continued how he was. The boy was too fast and too strong to be caught by a genin with a year less of experience. But Naruto had to try. His pride demanded such. He closed his eyes and began to truly concentrate. Lee trudged forward, uncaring of what Naruto did. Bright blue eyes snapped open. Shadow Clone Jutsu, Naruto called out, his voice echoing slightly in the corridor. Lee had the decency to look surprised as copies of Naruto appeared throughout the area before his expression hardened once again. Simple clones will not work to help you, Naruto-san. It wasn't very surprising that Lee did not know what shadow clones were, seeing how it was forbidden jutsu in Konoha. Other than Kakashi, Naruto didn't know who else could create shadow clones, and that improved their effectiveness even more. The element of surprise was a technique that Kakashi had drilled into the team, stating that even the weakest of ninjas could defeat a janin if the situation was in their favor. Activate Uchiha Tejutsu, going into action. Skill. Level 3 activated Uchiha Clan Tajutsu. Every minute, usage consumes 15 MP points. The user does not lose MP while using this skill for one minute. The clones engaged their enemy. Naruto could feel Lee's surprise as they began to physically attack him. He probably expected the clones to disappear after the lightest of touches, but was confused after he found that it was not the case. But that did not really matter. Even though they could do real damage, they were not as durable as the real Naruto. The difference was evident to the seasoned genin. The clones disappeared one by one, but at that point, Naruto was finished with his next set of seals. Substitution. He swapped with one of his clones. Naruto completely tanked the swat to his right shoulder as Lee's eyes widened in surprise. With a loud roar, he rushed at Lee with murderous intent. A satisfying smack was heard as Naruto managed to finally hit a solid, clean strike on the green-clad boy. Naruto huffed smugly. Indeed, but the fight was not over. And according to Lee, it hadn't even begun. Lee charged once again, but this time, he was even faster. Naruto gasped as he felt a river of pain flood him. Lee had kicked him right on the chin, sending him high into the air. How is that even possible? Front Lotus? Naruto attempted to land accordingly back down, but found that he couldn't even move while airborne due to Lee clamping down on his arms and legs. When had he come behind him? Bandages started to creep around his body, trapping his body entirely while in the air. Summon Shadow Zabu. Naruto stopped his summoning prematurely. 
He couldn't just reveal an ability right now, just before the Chunin exams. He looked at his upcoming demise and winced. This was going to hurt. That's enough, Lee. Bandages loosened immediately, freeing Naruto's legs to move. With his frantically moving legs, he managed to quickly gain his position in the air and land on both his legs. He had thankfully avoided a massive injury. What was Lee thinking? Of course, Naruto would probably heal back, but Lee didn't really know that, did he? That voice was awfully similar though. Naruto moved his gaze until he found the source of the voice that had inadvertently saved him. And they found, a giant turtle? Or was it a tortoise? He had never been able to tell the difference. Lee kneeled in front of the turtle as if it was some kind of deity, his face apologetic and full of worry. I'm sorry, please, I only wanted to test my capabilities. The turtle scowled, the expression looking comical on the reptile's face. That move is forbidden for a reason, Lee. I am gravely disappointed by your lack of thinking ahead. A fight isn't just about bronze, unfortunately, or your sensei would have been the strongest in our village long ago. For your lack of obedience, a fit punishment will be assigned. Naruto just looked at the conversation blankly. This had to be a joke. I promise, I'll face the consequences without hesitation, Lee swore solemnly, putting a fist to his heart. The turtle nodded. All right then, I believe your sensei wants to talk with you. Smoke spun on the turtle's large shell as a large man appeared on top. With his distinctly green suit, bushy eyebrows and exuberant pose, it was obvious who it was. Lee Sensei Gai. Gai Sensei, Lee shouted. Lee rushed to his mentor, who stood still and waited. Blood splattered from the boy's mouth as Gai punched him straight in the face, knocking him back for all it was worth. Naruto stood, shocked at the sudden turn of events. Lee, you have my utmost disappointment. I apologize for not arriving sooner. Guy shook his head. Well, let's not talk about that. I'll make this quick since both of you need to leave soon. The first examination will be starting. Once the exam is done, I'll make you run around Konoha a hundred laps. Lee gave a broad smile and a thumbs up. Sure, Guy sensei that's what Naruto thought happened that the two hugged each other forever. As soon as Guy brought up the Chunin exams he had left. How could I have become so distracted? Bewildered, Naruto thought. I really don't want to think about how Sasuke or Sakura would have responded, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. Lee yelled from behind him, Naruto-san, please wait a second. Naruto bided his time until the boy caught up. What is it? The exam is going to start soon. Don't worry, Guy sensei told me there is still some time left. We have 6 to 10 minutes before it starts actually. I wanted to speak to you about something. Naruto was perplexed. Is there anything to talk about? He gave Lee a nod to proceed. During the fight, as I used the front lotus, I noticed something strange. I'm sure it was the case however, as I'm pretty good at inferring things. You seem to be holding something back for whatever reason, Naruto-san, Lee said quietly as he walked alongside the blonde. The blonde was a little taken aback. Was it the fleeting pause that triggered him? It made no difference either way. Naruto was at a loss for words because Lee was right. Lee correctly interpreted his silence as approval. So I was right. I won't judge you for holding back against me since I've done the same thing. But I urge you to not try to do this during the exams, especially against me of all people. Holding back against an equally strong opponent is considered an insult for me and many others that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for accepting my spar. Naruto began to feel guilty, even though he didn't know why. Lee departed first, bidding farewell and giving Naruto time to reflect. With all she could do was sigh. I mean is there really no way to demonstrate my necromancy? But Naruto made a self-promise to himself that he would give it everything he had if he had to battle Lee, even if his shadows couldn't help him. He returned to the room where the other teams were gathered. With each village in its own corner of the room, they appeared to have naturally divided from one another. With great anticipation, Naruto headed towards the Kanoha section to greet his fellow academy classmates. 
all of the ninja teams from the academy were divided into year groups inside the Kanoha section. Naruto said, Yo! There was Kiba and the others in his team, Naruto's own, and Shikamaru and the others in his. Kiba looked up and down at Naruto and exclaimed, Oh, Naruto is here, you look a bit different. Naruto cast a doubtful glance at himself. Did he really? He might have grown by an inch or so. Haha, ha, just kidding. You should have seen your face, the Inusuka blurted out while bursting into laughter. It caused Naruto's eye to twitch. Well, you don't seem to have changed much either still as stubborn as ever, huh? Kiba froze, then gave a smug nod. That's right. Shikamaru gave him a light neck blow. It wasn't a compliment, idiot. Hey, Naruto. Naruto said, glancing at the spiky-haired Genin with curiosity, Shikamaru, I'm surprised to see you here, to be honest. I thought you wouldn't have wanted to compete in the Chunin exams. You'd be right, in fact, Shikamaru conceded, wiping his forehead. But I don't think Ino or Choji would have let me live if I didn't come. You bet, Ino exclaimed while having a separate discussion with Sakura and Sasuke. Naruto nearly had sympathy for the Uchiha. Nearly. He turned to face the other teams. Yo, Hinata and Shino. Although Naruto had already used Observe on every ninja a month earlier, he was tempted to do so again. Though Hinata had made significant progress, he was still far from where he wanted to be. Although Shino was improving at a similar rate to Hinata, if she hadn't used her Byakugan, she might have been stronger. Alternatively, that was his inference based on their respective stats. Shino's bugs weren't exactly a secret in Kanoha, and some of the more senior ninjas from other villages would certainly be familiar with his last name. His bugs were deadly, as they were all aware. As usual, Hanada stammered, her cheeks starting to flush. H hi, Naruto-kun. Naruto-san, it's good to see you again. Shino's voice wasn't particularly quiet, but for some reason it sounded like a whisper. Everyone engaged in some form of small talk throughout the remainder of the conversation. Nine rookies straight from the academy, it's certainly a rare sight. The new voice made Naruto's ears perk up. The tall boy had an odd appearance, to put it mildly. With his longer, silver hair pulled back into a ponytail and round glasses encircling his eyes, he resembled a typical bright student from the academy. At least he was from Kanoha. He went on in a pompous tone. If I'm being honest, you guys seem kind of naive. You really shouldn't be taking these exams so lightly. And who are you? An irritated Ino questioned. Kabuto? Trust me on this one, don't underestimate everyone around you. It's my seventh time taking the exam, and I still haven't become a chunin. Here, take a look at these ninja info cards. Eyeing the bits of paper Kabuto took out of his pocket, Naruto looked at them. They had some sort of kanji inscribed on them, and they were a vibrant orange color. These cards hold a plentitude of information about a whole lot of things. The number of participants, strengths and weaknesses of some of the contestants, and other stuff. Naruto merely gave the person in front of him a cautious look. Given his wealth of knowledge, he wasn't your average shinobi, was he? His other talents didn't seem to be affected by being a seventh-time candidate for the Chunin exams. However, it seemed to be very helpful, and he wasn't going to lose the chance to assess his opponent's skills. After all, becoming a Chunin at the conclusion of the exams was the main purpose of it all. The ocularized Genin was almost pleading with them to inquire about someone or something. Perhaps to establish some trust, Naruto pulled away. These days he had started to become overly paranoid. Naruto took a step forward. Can you tell me about Gara? He's a Genin from Suna. Kabuto grinned and began frantically riffling through his deck. When he had finally selected one, he read each detail one at a time. Gaia, huh? Well, he's quite the capable one, isn't he? 8C ranked missions and 1B ranked mission even before the entrance one. Not bad for a genin. There's not much information on his strengths, unfortunately. As for his feats, he has returned from all of his missions without a single scratch. Naruto paid close attention. 
other than realizing the boy was even more of a monster than he had anticipated, that was all he had learned from it. Sasuke started asking questions about Lee, so he ignored the others. He had underestimated how difficult the Chunin exams would be. This would not, in the slightest, end well if there were any more monsters like Lee and Gara, and that does not include Neji. Shut your worthless mouths up, all of you. The loud noise and the explosion of smoke made Naruto wince a little. When the smoke cleared, everyone could see an entire group of shinobi. The name is Marino Ibiki, the examiner for the initial test. Tall and intimidating, Marino Ibiki exuded confidence and strength. His face was horrifically scarred, and his dark trench coat did little to alter his perception. Everyone please submit your applications and sit down at the seat number mentioned. Slowly, and with careful attention to everyone he saw, Naruto did so. The only foreign genin he truly recognized was Kiratsuchi, so he tried not to stare too long at her. He was curious about the exact plan of action for the initial assessment. It appeared as though they were going to write a test of sorts based on how the tables and the classroom looked. Naruto stopped. Surely, they won't require us to write an exam. Nervously, Naruto laughed as he thought. Even though he had put a lot of points into intelligence, it didn't help him learn anything new. All it did was slightly alter his perspective and raise his comprehension. Naruto glanced at the students standing next to him, Hinata and a few unidentified Adagakure genin. Why did they sit so close to each other if it was a test? Ibiki went into further detail about the exam's regulations, including the point losses and team penalties incurred for cheating or attempting to cheat. The Chunins encircling them were merely there to keep an eye on every pupil and reprimand any who were found to be cheating. And lastly, the last point. The entire team would be eliminated if any player dropped 10 points. Naruto let out a wild laugh inside his head. Naturally, of course, naturally, none of us will be able to continue. If the shocked expressions on Sakura and Sasuke's faces were any indication, he could tell they were thinking the same things. He remained gloomy while the papers were distributed. This was not good at all. They only had an hour to answer 10 questions. Every student is aware that tests with fewer questions are the ones to be more concerned about because they have the biggest impact on your final grades. Naruto answered each question individually. Surely, at least one of them would be simple. First question. Suppose you were tossing a kunai 20 meters away from an enemy shinobi who was perched on a tree. There was a 20 degree angle between the kunai and the ground. When throwing a second kunai to hit an enemy, what angle and speed should be used if the shinobi is moving at the same speed as a chunin? As long as the scenarios you imagine are plausible, you are free to assume certain things. Naruto experienced his eyes protruding from their sockets. What sort of question was that exactly? Was there any way to solve that? If one could figure out a solution to such a problem on the battlefield, what good was it? In the midst of a fight, could someone casually calculate it all in the blink of an eye? Naruto moved on to the next set of questions, shaking his head. Every one of them was the same. In frustration, he tried not to slam his head on the table. No, no, I need to give this some thought. I doubt that even Sakura could confidently answer these queries. Most of the people in the room are unable to do it as well, if not her. Naruto's eyes grew wide with insight. Why is the penalty for cheating only two marks? Doesn't that mean you should be disqualified? Why are the seats arranged so closely together too? It almost seems as though they made cheating easier. Hold on, they want to trick us and not get discovered. One quality shared by all shinobi is their ability to act covertly. However, the next issue emerged. While the others possessed unique skills, Sasuke possessed the Sharingan, and both Hinata and Neji possessed their Byakugan. He lacked any unique skills that would have allowed him to cheat without one of the proctors noticing right away. One by one, Genin teams were going down as he considered that. Hinata appeared to be aware of his situation. She looked ahead and tipped her paper slightly so that parts of the answers were visible to Naruto. 
Hinata was obviously more astute than she gave off the impression, as she had completed four or five of the questions. He couldn't resist the temptation to take a look. Despite his efforts to look away, he could feel an unseen force pulling his head towards the paper. Naruto-kun, please copy these answers, Hinata said in a whisper as quiet as she could manage, sounding a lot like her usual voice. Well it might have been, but the blonde thought as much. There's no use trying the risk now that so many people are leaving. If Hinata and I have already dropped a few points by now, that wouldn't surprise me. I don't have to say no. I have to hold off until the final query. He gave a small shake of his head and then glanced back at the paper. She must have understood the message because she rearranged her paper to its original position. For 40 minutes, the last question drew in anticipation with every passing second. The tenth question will now be announced. Hearing the tenth question's final rule was even more terrifying. Naruto felt the pressure rising and began to perspire. Now should he answer the question or not? Given that he didn't write a single response, his departure was the only thing that was anticipated. There was only one crazy option left. Naruto put up a hand. Ooh, before you say the final question, I need to go the restroom, please. He could feel the genin's critical gazes on his back. This was exactly what Kankuro had done a few minutes earlier. Ibuki said scornfully, Proctor, take this boy to the restrooms. After being put in handcuffs, Naruto was pulled by ropes. It was probably a handicap that made sense that the cuffs kept him from performing any jutsus. The blonde entered the bathroom and proceeded to one of the stalls. Although they weren't very clean or well-maintained, they would do for the time being. After all, he wasn't there for that exact reason. The proctor yelled from the bathroom corner, Make it quick, brat, you've wasted enough time as it is. Although he was taking a significant risk, it was undoubtedly preferable to being kicked out along with both of his teammates. He would also need to be willing to get dirty if he wanted it to work. Naruto inhaled deeply. Take note. Noting. Observation accomplished. Yuta Hanami is her name. The textbook genius is the title. Working as a Chunin of Kanoha. Level 13. HP 100,100. MP 100,100. Chakra 125,125. STR 7. Vit 6. Dex, 8. Int, 10. Wise, 5. Luck, 5. He was brought out by a Chunin who was incredibly weak. Naruto was taken aback by Yuta's extreme weakness. If someone at level 13 could become Chunin, it begged the question of what the Chuyunin exams actually tested. Naruto was aware that he was not very high level either, but the amount of abilities the system had granted him was entirely unaccounted for, distorting his level. His actual level would be four or five higher at the absolute least. It was also very fortunate for the genin that Yuta was regarded as the textbook genius. The man fastened his pants. Yes, the handcuffs would stop Jutsus. Nevertheless, Naruto's powers never required his hands, did they? Call forth Shadow Zabuza. The Chunin stood frozen in place, watching the horror behind him expand into shadows. A wispy darkness took on human form, and Kubikirabacho's dark form settled on the proctor's neck. The familiar feel of steel against his neck caused Yuta to freeze. Yuta dropped the leash to the cuffs in shock, and Naruto gave the Chunin a menacing glare. Bobi what are... Coldly, Naruto cut in, shout, move, or try anything, and I'll kill you right here and now. Yuta screamed in fear, you can't. You and your team will be disqualified. Naruto let out a slow laugh. The sound the small boy was making was extremely strange, which added to its terrifying nature. After all, that was the outcome he was aiming for. Naruto moved toward the perspiring man and said, The deal is simple. Tell me all the exam answers or else you die. Why you won't hurt him me? Naruto questioned, wearing an evil smile. Do you not know who I am? I'm the container of the Kyuubai. Even now, it's begging me to kill you, tear you apart, and feed on your flesh. Should I answer it, Yuta Hanami? When his name was mentioned, Yuta gasped. P please, I can't willingly let you cheat, 
they'll kick me out. How is this willingly? I'm forcing you to tell me, Yuta-san, it's practically cheating just like the others. This jutsu of mine, it's not an illusion, it's a curse. Mention that I cheated during the test, and that sword will come down. I don't care whether I do it in the middle of the classroom, and neither does the Nine Tails. Now, will you reveal the answers or not? With all of his intent, Naruto concentrated on Yuta, hoping he would respond. Pow, new talent attained, lust level one. Yuta reluctantly nodded. Naruto grinned. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now, the second question was especially hard. All have you passed the exam? As Ibuki disclosed the true purpose of the mission, Naruto tried not to lose his temper. He would have passed even if he hadn't written anything, according to the rules. Either way, the test was passed by him. Naruto gave Yuta a thumbs up as he left the classroom, defying her refusal to accept him. Really, I couldn't have asked for anything less. It really wears me out to act like a psychotic killer, wow. The initial test was finished, and he'd passed with honors and with warnings. Another lengthy speech by Ibuki to motivate the pupils was cut short when a purple ball flew through the glass window and into the classroom. Glass shards shot to the ground, and then the purple figure slowly revealed herself. I'm Anko Mitarashi, the chief exam officer for the second examination of the Chunin exams. This is going to irritate you. Pow, the skill tree is now accessible. Naruto's gaze was fixed on the floating screen beside him. Tree of skills? What on earth is this? Select one of the two demonstrated skills. Level 1 Enhanced Eyesight. Level 1 Iron Skin. So this was it for today. I will continue the story next part. Till then, we weave offline.